I'm Dr. Ruth K. Westheimer. I was born in a little village near, uh, called Wiesenfeld, near Frankfurt, but I actually grew up in Frankfurt am I? And my father had a um, small business of notion. He went with a bicycle to different stores with uh, the boxes on his bicycle. My mother helped him in, in his business. And my grandmother, my uh, father's mother lived with us, or we lived with her, and she really took uh, good care of me. And I lived there until I was ten and a half. I went to an Orthodox Jewish school, and I had lots of friends. I had a wonderful childhood. I had 13 dolls, I had roller skates, I had a dollhouse. And um, then after the night of broken glass, um, there was a conference in Evian uh, where they tried to save German Jewry um, and the conference failed miserably. But out of that conference came a cry, let's at least save the children. So England, despite dark clouds on the horizon, England took 10,000 Jewish children. Holland, Belgium, France and Switzerland took 300 each supposedly for six months, so that the parents should be able to uh, leave Germany. My father was taken in November of 1938. I was an only child. I didn't want to leave my mother and grandmother, but he said he can only come back to Frankfurt if I will join the group that, um, of the Kindertransport to Switzerland. So I had no choice. My mother and grandmother came to the railroad station on January 5th, 1939 and waved goodbye and that's the last I saw them. So they all were uh, deported. So I was on a group going to Switzerland to a children's home. The children's home in Switzerland became an orphanage. And I was there for six years. If I had been to Holland, Belgium or France, I wouldn't be alive. These children did not come out alive. And then in 1945, right after the war ended, I went to then Palestine. I went on a kibbutz. I uh, went then into the Haganah, that was the forerunner of the Israel Defense Forces. I was a sniper. I was a very good sniper. I've never killed anybody but I can still put five bullets in the red circle. I first was a kindergarten teacher, director of a kindergarten in Paris for a few years. And then I worked in public health. And fortunately for me, the money ran out on a government project at Columbia University, and I needed a job. So I got a position for Planned Parenthood of New York City and worked there and did my doctoral dissertation on the data of uh, following 2,000 women, their contraceptive and abortive history. And then I realized, I taught how to teach sex education and um, realized I didn't know enough. It was very fortunate. I went to a, a course at, Colum uh, at the Cornell Medical School uh, led by Dr. Helen Singer Kaplan and became a sex therapist, so I had the both the academic training and the therapeutic skills. I did the radio program 10 years on WYNY NBC. Every Sunday night from 10 to 12, I was very well uh, prepared academically. I had all of the data, but more important, my accent, this German, Swiss, uh, Israeli, French, I was five years in Paris, and an American accent helped because when people turned on the dial, they knew it was me. So they knew that I had the knowledge, they recognized the accent, and then there is something very important. In the Talmud, in the Jewish tradition, it says, a lesson taught with humor is a lesson retained. I couldn't tell you a joke. I hear jokes every day, they go in one ear, out the other. But I can use humor 
when I hear some questions. In the, the play about me, Becoming Dr. Ruth, which is going around the country now, it's in Philadelphia, now it's going to Florida, it was in New York. So I'm showing a picture of my four grandchildren and I say, I say, the playwright put it in the, in the uh, play and the actress says it, that uh, looking at my four grandchildren, Hitler lost and I won. So I don't call myself a Holocaust survivor because I was not in a camp. I was in a children's home that became an orphanage. But I certainly call myself an orphan of the Holocaust. And there is no question that I, I was and still am a Zionist. I'm going every single year to Israel. Uh, what it has impacted myself and others, I did a sociological study about that, is that by being survivors, by being orphans of the Holocaust, um, somebody like me knew that we have to do something to repair the world. So it is right now crucial to tell stories. So I'm very happy about The Hollywood Reporter because uh, I'm now 87 and um, that whole generation is not going to be around for much longer. And there are two important reasons that I'm very glad that uh, you people do this. One is there are people who say there never was a Holocaust. They are called the Holocaust deniers. And we have to stand up and be counted and say, I was an orphan at the age of 10 because of the Nazis. The other reason is there are people who say there's Holocaust fatigue, which is a terrible thing because there are people who say, enough already. We heard enough about the Holocaust. Uh, we don't want to hear any more about it. Uh, even if it did, it ha did happen, let's move on. So for those two reasons, very important that people like me have to talk about it, people like me have to write about it, and they have to stand up and be counted to, uh, it's called to repair the world. In Hebrew, it's called tikkun olam, to repair the world.